at the outset i thank almighty and my parents for this uh, wonderful day my hearty congratulations to commerce department for 75 and 50 it is not so easy to have a, such a beautiful a meaningful fabulous and wonderful journey because i am also one of the past students of commerce department for the rector for the principal for the secretary head of the department and professors and retired professors and the staff of the entire commerce department and my dear students it is my real pleasure and honor to be part of this important celebrations and today st joseph stands tall it is because of the quality it is because of the values they import to all the youngsters i am thankful to the management in fact uh, head of the department professor was telling that they have been chasing for me for the last 3 months of course i have been i mean logistics is a business where you need lot of travel i have been going around and that is the reason i mean really i wanted to come back and to speak to the students and at least now i have this opportunity to come here and to meet you all and it is again my good opportunity to come to my old college whenever i get into this college there is always an emotional feeling when i came in i started remembering because uh, again this endowment lecture is on an account of uh, retired professors it's a wonderful thing but for those professors i may not be standing before you all so when i walked in in you know, those days when my prof professor mr vellu with a big cigar in his hand and white and white walking around the corridors of commerce department and of course father valapuli always running around chasing us all into the classes and uh, i had the head of the department uh, mr dennis who used to teach us and used to start banking that is banking class i also remembered about our organizational behavior class one lecturer and we used to have three doors and i used to always sit in the last bench sneaking out of the last door when he is when you were seriously teaching about organizational behavior and so on so it was a wonderful experience i always you know think i should come back to the college and again to go through this wonderful experience because those days we were all under pressure that we have to prove ourselves we have to move around and get on to the next stage and so on so that was a wonderful feeling even today and lasting memories every building i used to go on some sometime when i come here whenever i get an opportunity to speak uh, in the college or in the department i go and stand and start remembering so many things you know you are all fortunate i should say to study in jesuit institutions when there are uh, there are many institutions but personally i have been trained and i studied in all the jesuit institutions as father said i come from a small town devagote of course my mother was a teacher my father was a clerk they couldn't give you give us all comforts but then they really wanted to give us the best possible education and that's it since and as father said i was a very troublesome boy that's why my mother put me into the boat school in dindigul st maris 
I was able to slowly change myself. But all along, I studied in Tamil medium. I must say that St. Joseph's completely transformed me. But for St. Joseph's, it would have been difficult for me to even to speak to you today in English. Because having studied in Tamil medium and coming to St. Joseph's College, there was, there was a lot of humiliations because the students coming from Campion School or all types of English schools, you know, they ignore us. We, we were called village students and we were called fellows they don't know English, Tamilians, or so many things. So we were all different group. And English English speaking boys are different groups. And then I was feeling very bad. I went to my, my eldest brother, Father Alphonse was here. I went and told him it is better that I get out of this because I know English is going to be difficult for me. And all along I was in Tamil medium. Then, you know, every day I go and uh, sit in his room, started, you know, weeping and all that. Then finally he told me, read small, small books. I think slowly you can, uh, you know, get on to it. And I was, a, you know, in school I was a district football player. I love, I was passionate towards football. So I really wanted to join St. Jesus team. And then I decided either this way I go or that way. Then he told me every day I have to go to library, a library, beautiful library, and two hours, keep the dictionary with me and, you know, Times of India, Newsweek, all the magazines I take over and read every sentence uh, along with the dictionary and started developing the phrases of English. And then the pronunciation was absolutely, was difficult for me. I used to say, you know, uh, Pant, I used to say fant. Bank, I'd say pank. So, you know, coming from there, what you know, this Tamil and English, you know, mixing together, I'll say, yeah, Then I just got hold of small uh, radio, and uh, those days, even now, I think, around 6.30 in the morning, we used to have the BBC News. To, cor to correct my pronunciation, I started listening that uh, news every day without fail for about 15 minutes. And within me, I challenged. The boys come from the English school and also from Campion School, all the schools, they were all doing a lot of uh, debates in English. And I decided and determined before leaving this college, I will definitely get the prize for English debate. And I got it. You know, that is because of the positive attitude which I could imbibe from such a great Jesuit priest. If you have, if you are positive, you see invisible and you feel intangible and you can do impossible. That is why it is said that you need to be having positive attitude all the time towards anything. When you approach, I can do it, I will do it. And if, when you approach with a kind of reluctance and negative uh, approach, yes, you will never be successful. For me, any risk when I approach, I say, yes, I will win. Maybe in some places I fail, I don't mind. That is the kind of uh, thing I had in this uh, college. But one thing I have to share with you, having started my business, fathers always taught me that I have to give back to the society. I'm the most satisfied person today. It is not because I earned money, but I could give back to my alma mater. I could give back to my educational institution wherein I studied. And particularly for Jesuit institution. What I am today, it is because of Jesuit priests and Jesuit institutions, the kind of values they taught me. Till today, I follow in my business. That is why you would have seen, out of 6,000 companies we got, 
International Customs Award and Certificate of Merit for Compliance, Steadfastness. What else I could pay back to my institutions? This is what, my dear students, it is not that you get a rank. It is not that you go into kind of a business and make money. But then what is the quality of money you have made? Give back to the society, more than that, to the institutions. When you see Karmatur College, I built and gave them the stadium. And of course, in Sargani, where my father studied, was a small school. I built the plus one and plus two uh, classrooms. And of course, the, uh, the church, which is being managed by an Oreo, Jesuit priest, I could do the best. And then in a uh, deep little school in Devakote, Father Tagur was my warden that time. I could build a, 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 a state, I mean, a hall, big hall in the name of Father Tagur. And then in St. Mary's Madurai, in the name of my eldest brother and Father Alphonse and Melchior, I could build an independent building. And Lindical St. Mary's, where I did my uh, you know, 8th to 11th, I could put up an independent building in my name. And then, of course, a beautiful stadium in Levi in Chennai, uh, Dr. Xavier Brito Hall. <laughs> it is not for uh, boasting myself I am telling this. You know, I always say, you work and live for success, you become a master. But if you live and work for satisfaction, you become the legend. And satisfied life is much better than successful life because your success is measured by others. But satisfaction is measured by heart and soul and mind. Because we come with nothing, go with nothing. In between, we worry for everything. That is the status of life. <laughs> yes, let me come to my endowment lecture. Having said that, I don't know how many of you know about logistics. So much is talked about, particularly after pandemic. Now we, we are, we are after uh, you know, the last four or five years, a lot of changes are taking place. There is a dynamism, excellence in logistics. And uh, from Prime Minister to every other state, they are talking about how to develop this uh, supply chain. Because there was a huge disruption of supply chain management during pandemic period. And yes, for trade, commerce, and industry, the lifeline and the backbone is only the logistic industries. To make it very clear, the critical factors of logistics is your road, rail, ship, aviation, warehousing, everything is included today in logistics solutions management. You know, today, you talk about the size of the economy, GDP level. US is number one with almost $27 trillion. Number two is China, with $17.7 .7 trillion. And third, of course, uh, you know, this then comes uh, Germany with $4.4 trillion. And then Japan, 4.2 trillion dollars. And I'm really happy to say, as Prime Minister had said, India has, from the seventh place, now we have moved into the fifth place. When I say fifth place, we are in 3.7 trillion dollars. Then how are we going to achieve this five trillion dollars it has, already, it, has already, it has been already projected that the country will reach $5 trillion by 2027. If that is so, 
is it possible that is the crux of this how this 5 trillion dollar with logistics excellence and what is going to be the uh, major role to be played by logistic industries to tell you frankly this country has got so much of potential because of three d's one is demand one is demand one is demography and number three is democracy this five trillion dollar achievement is possible because we have started having strong financial foundation and a very strong domestic demand because of the population you know we have already crossed chinese population 1.41 billion a strong domestic and then dynamic ecosystem and india has got the one of the highest high saving interest rate and above all today in few years time india will supply labor to the world we have 25% incremental workforce to the world that is the reason why for india the gdp has been projected at 6.3 whereas the global average is only 2.9% and that is we have it's a commendable projection as far as i am concerned now having this ambition how are we going to drive this to make it and that's where the country has to look for or do something different the country has to become a leading manufacturing hub in recent days would have read lot of manufacturing industries are getting shifted from south africa japan so, so, south korea japan china us everywhere now it has become a very potential destination for those countries there is a lot of shift in manufacturing industries so it has to become a leading manufacturing hub number 2 India has to become an exporting country. See, in the global exports, India is one or two percent today, which is very, very negligible. Whereas China is more than thirty-nine percent is being exported. So India has to become an export. That's why they have fixed a target of almost one trillion dollar export in twenty twenty-eight, and that is also possible. the third important thing which has to be done is the growth and the excellence of logistics chain this is where i tell you frankly our prime minister came up with a lot of slogans those days i think it's all beautiful slogans but slowly i am seeing that these slogans are becoming solutions you would have heard make in india to bring all overseas foreign multinational industries into india make in india digital india skill india startup india and so on and infra india and that's true that because whatever policies which are made are all towards this and understanding the importance of logistics i tell you frankly how logistics is important you know india the logistics cost is one of the highest in the world when the world average is about 8 to 9% of your gdp now india it is estimated 13 to 14% of the gdp if you could make 1% saving in your logistics cost it will automatically go to you have 5 trillion dollars that is why this industry was 190 billion dollars in a few years back and 2023 surprise to note we are in 435 billion size of industry log logistic industry and it is projected in 5 years time we will reach 635 650 billion dollars and we ourselves are going to 
you know, contribute more than a trillion dollar. In that case, achieving five trillion dollars by 2027 is not a problem. That is why our finance minister in the region, in, in the recent budget session, she told, rather we are very ambitious, beyond 2020, uh, 2030, we will achieve seven trillion dollars. Yes, we are marching towards that. That is why they announced Gati Sakti program. All these things, you must know that. There are a lot of things are happening in the economy, Indian economy, I'm proud of it, you know why? I had seen the most conventional period of this economy in this country. And I had seen the medieval period of this country. And I'm very fortunate to see the digital period of this country and economy, very advanced. Therein, I could easily watch what kind of changes have taken place in the last four decades, and particularly in the last five years. We have gained the complete momentum today compared to many of the countries. And that is the reason why this Gati Sakti program is a wonderful program. I, I think, I mean, our Prime Minister has talked about it many times, which is nothing but a master plan for this country for multi-model connectivity from a centralized portal, which means a marvelous job has been done. Whichever ministries which are doing infra and other areas, there are 16 ministries, because before, to get a license of a CFS, I had to go to five ministries, railway ministry, then I had to go to CWC, then I have to go to uh, you know finance ministry, commerce ministry. I personally had seen it. But whereas now, 16 ministries have been combined in such a way that you have a single platform for any, any, any organization coming into the country to have a better window of uh, you know, getting back the, the necessary permissions. So if you take it that way, that is the reason why they created national logistics policy to regulate the entire logistics of this country. And the beautiful program which they have, ULIP, a unique interface logistics program wherein the Gati Sakti and your logistic, national logistics policy become the key component. So the reducing the procedural aspects and uh, make, uh, you know, we call it as ease of doing. The ease of doing is very important. If you go to Singapore, if you go to Dubai, Everything is done in 24 hours or 48 hours. This country, we were they were taking almost a week and so on. There is a tremendous development and the lead time has been completely controlled and reduced. We have come to the level wherein we are even surpassing UK and USA in terms of censoring and getting the procedures, procedures shortened. So this portal, which has been created in the last couple of years, 2021, it was Gati Sakti program, centralized portal. 2022 is the national logistics to regulate the entire logistics. And 2024, they are now combining everything. And that is the reason why this industry, you know, uh, you know the World Bank, uh, the portal, we call it as uh, World Bank Log uh, Logistics Performance Index. A couple of years back, we were in the 40, 44th place among all the countries. Today, we have moved up in the short possible time, six places. We have come to 38 position in terms of performance, logistics performance. It is because of all the reforms that are happening in this uh, particular area. That is the reason why I strongly believe this logistics development and growth and excellence is going to contribute to the GDP. And achieving $5 trillion economy is not going to be a problem. And by achieving the $5 trillion economy, where are we moving? Where are we moving? You listen to me now. Where are we moving? I said first, US, $27 trillion. I said second, China, 17.7 trillion. And third, I said Germany, 4.4 trillion. And fifth, I mean, fourth, 
I said Japan 4.2 trillion. Then when you do 5 trillion, where will go? So you will definitely achieve in 2027 a 5 trillion economy and we are becoming manufacturing hub. We are becoming export economy and above all the supply chain is really getting upgraded particularly in the technology area which you all know and which is you know, uh, artificial in intelligence, blockchain and then internet of things. There are so many technological developments and digitalization is happening in this area thereby as a backbone of this country this industry is going to contribute to even 7 trillion economy very soon. And that is the reason why it is said in, in another two years time, this logistic industry is going to create employment opportunity for 10 million people. And this is one area which was completely ignored before. That is why my vision is to create a university of logistics. I have structured the syllabus based on the various job opportunities and with the humanities included, it becomes BBA logistics and MBA logistics, thereby it becomes a full stream of course. And even today our industry requires a lot of skilled people. We find it very difficult because people come, we train them for a couple of years, then only they start working. We need practical and theoretical orientation in logistic industry. That is how I have structured my syllabus and that will be a forerunner to manage the skilled people for this important industry. Dear, dear students, to conclude, as you have seen, this is what my vision was three, uh, three decades before. And I had the vision that this country has got the potential to move forward. One day, all multinational companies will come into India and look for a different type of all-inclusive services. So from custom broker, as you would have seen, and I developed all the allied services of logistics. That is the reason why our company is one of the very few companies in India to offer all the logistic services in a single platform. When I say single platform, the kind of comprehensive and competitive and competent service that could be given by Kerry and Dave, only very few can give uh, in India. That is one of the reasons why in the last two years we have grown fast. Any multinational company coming to us, whatever service you want, you give. This, this is one of the reasons why we could also reduce the logistics because we don't have a middleman. And we become competitive and thereby we are able to win many of the contracts. So on this day, I must tell that whatever it is, wherever you are, you have to have all the time track your thoughts. Because as you know, the thoughts become words and the words become your action and everything has to be positive. And the action becomes a behavior. And the behavior becomes the habit. And what I have learned from Jesuits and Jesuit institution have made to be compliant oriented, to be honest, to have the highest integrity in the field of logistics. And so that's why I say success is not miracle or is, it is not mysterious. It is the na it is natural consequence of your good habits. And if only you have good habits, you be natural. When you are natural, automatically you, you have a passion. When you have the passion for anything, you will enjoy doing it, even your studies. Whenever you take a book, whenever you read, oh my God, I have my exam and I am compelled to read and uh, you know study in order to write the exam. If you do that, you will never come up. 
what you need to do is yes i enjoy studying the passion in anything you should if you develop a passion that's why it is said if you want to be successful you should plan i give you three p's plan prepare and perform this is applicable for business and also for your academic qualification plan tell me plan prepare and perform and for that what do you require you require passion passion number 2 uh, passion i could say what else uh, perseverance and uh, also purpose purpose passion and perseverance and uh, if you have a strong purpose in your life to succeed you don't have to be pushed your vision and the purpose will be will automatically push you to the right destination so i only request all of you to have a strong purpose in life and strong passion in your life and complete perseverance never give up never give up how many times i failed how many times people have been backstabbed how many times i have been cheated again again and again i fall but then i never give up i tell i have i have come from nothing i have just with 20000 rupees with about uh, five people i started this organization if i go back also i don't worry but if i have to do it i will do it with my full heart and i will do it with my full passion and i i i could do that because of this so please remember your background or your family's richness or anybody else help need, need not drive you you should always feel that i can do it and that's why with the, with, the, with these words i would like to conclude past is always a lesson so many people are anxious all the time or depressed it is because they are thinking about the past i had not performed well in the last test that should never get reflected in the next area i have not got a good job no you keep trying then you will always get a good job so it has to be there and most of the times i find today youngsters are anxious if you are anxious then you cannot create a good future that is why the past is a lesson and the future is the hope and i always say hope is nothing but nothing but hatch is hold o is on p is problem and e is ends hold on problem ends and i tell you the present is the gift make use of it you always continue to create opportunities never wait for the opportunities and you can also do it and you will do it thank you